Welcome to Real Estate in Real Time. I'm Woody Zimmerman here with Mark Skabowski of Remax Lakes. Welcome to the show. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Doing well. The uh, the holidays are here. Holy moly. I know. Into December already. Good I can't Lord. believe we're, we are approaching <laughs> 2024. Uh, remember in 2020, we were, hey, we can see clearly now. Oh, and yeah. We get blind. Oh, I know. For like the, boom. Yeah, I know. For the first <laughs> two and a half months, three months, we're like, yeah. hey, I mean, that was, that was the theme for a very short time. Yeah. And then we didn't know what was going on. We were lost in the wilderness. We were completely lost. But, you know, the, the thing about it is when you would, as we entered into the pandemic and, you know, it was pure chaos. Never did I think that the housing market was going to take yeah. off the way it did and yeah. just the multiple offers and just so many. I mean, everything changed, but the housing market, I did not expect that at all. No, it, it went nuts. None of us expected it either and didn't expect it to continue through 21 mm -hmm. and well into 22. Yeah. And, you know, the market kind of shifted the middle of the summer in 22. Mm -hmm. Still, you know. A lot of houses moving, mm -hmm. but slower than we were in 20 and 21. Yeah. And 23 started out slow mm -hmm. at the beginning of this year. Yeah. And now it, it, it's ending slow. <laughs> it's ending mm -hmm. slow. Um, but, you know, it, it's still, we'll talk a little bit today about, you know, inventory and part of the reasons why inventory is slowing down. Mm -hmm. But I, I know last week, uh, you know, I mentioned, hey, we're going to talk a little bit about stats. Yeah. next week so I, so I did pull a couple okay. the the one that I want to focus on is the average days on market and the median days on market so I said one really it's the same stat but two different measures of the same statistic so the average days on market and again this is January through November okay. so roughly well it'll be the same time frame but two different years so when we say year over year yeah so in 22 the average days on market for everything in the housing market, residential housing yeah. was 25 days on market. Now, days on market is the time that it goes pending. Not that it closes from first day of listing to when it goes pending, gets marked pending, 25 days. That's really quickly considered That's... financing is 30 days. You know, So essentially within a, a 50, 60 day window, people who listed were moved out and the new owners were in the house. That's an incredible number. With the reality and the understanding that about 30% of the transactions were cash. Mm -hmm. So they probably closed faster than that. So mm -hmm. 30, 45 days, you list your house, you were out of your house. Yeah. That, that was 22. So what is 20? And the median last year was, i got to put my glasses on to see, it was eight days. Eight days for 22. That was, again, January through November of yeah. 22, eight days on the market. Amazing number. Gone. Yeah. So what has happened in 23? When we talked yeah. about, hey, the market's slowing and this is what's going on, the numbers back that up. Um, the average days on market for 23, January through November, is 33 days. About another market. week. Yeah. Yeah. Which, But when you think of that as a percentage... That's a 30% increase. Oh, yeah. 30% okay. slower, right? That's where they talk about stats and numbers. And, and I always say percentages don't lie. Well, seven days, that's no big deal. But when you say a 30% change, yeah. that, that means the number something. of days that's that it's on, it means yeah. something. Yeah. It may only be a week. But when the average is 20, but now it's 33, mm -hmm. what's that going to be going forward? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. The average days on market for an active listing right now is 60. 60 okay the average days on market again that's all across the county that's all of Kosciuszko county mm -hmm. so that means you know stuff that's way overpriced that means you know stuff that is in bad shape whatever all of those things but on average about 60 days now now so the number i'm talking lots of numbers lots of stats mm -hmm. 33 days is the average sold days on market for the average active listing right now is 63 days. 63 days. Is that, do you think that's seasonality? Do you think it's because of people were trying to take advantage of the market or because of higher interest rates or all of the above? Well, it's <laughs> all of the above. And, and really the, the focus on the stats is kind of leading into what we're going to talk about, which is the inventory issue. Mm -hmm. That, you know, and you hit the nail on the head. Interest rates impacted. 
right? Mm -hmm. The national media has jumped on interest rates. We had inflation running at what, 10%, oh. 12%, yeah. something like that. Yeah. You know, and is now tamped down to four and a half, five percent, something like that, maybe four, more more realistic, a more normal yeah. inflationary. Mm -hmm. And you know, inflation puts pressure on everything. It does. And it raises prices. That's just where what it is. So the supply of homes, the inventory that's available is the big deal. Mm -hmm. I think that is probably the, the biggest thing driving the housing market as far as these timelines extending and things like that. It's inventory and the inventory is there as a result of higher interest rates and affordability. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and after the break, we can talk a little bit about some of the more details, which why are we not seeing more homes come onto the market? Okay, you're listening to Real Estate in Real Time. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to Real Estate in Real Time. I'm Woody Zimmerman here with Mark Skabowski of Remax Lakes, and we're talking about inventory again. Inventory, inventory, affordability, interest rates, all of those things impact the housing market. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, economic conditions are still yeah. pretty good. I mean, if somebody wants a job, they can get a job. Unemployment's yeah. still low. Oh, it's super low. Right? Yeah. 4%. Yeah. You know, at one time we were down at less than 3% in, in Kosciuszko County. I don't know what the exact number is today. But if somebody wants a job, they can get a job. Right. Um, so inventory. Why is there not enough inventory? Well, new construction has not taken off again. There's just, they're not building enough new homes to meet demand. And I found some stat, and this was put out by NAR and the, um, the Home Builders Association, that new construction hasn't recovered after the crash of 08 09. It's essentially, if you look at the graph, I don't have the graph to show on the radio, yeah. if you look at the graph, we are building new homes at the same level as we did in the 70s. Oh, now really? think about that, think about that. Population has it, increased, yeah. right? I mean, people, there's just more people, so right. there should be more homes, but we're basically at the same level as we were in the 70s. It hasn't recovered. New home builders haven't gone out there and jumped on to build new homes to replace, mm -hmm. to provide for those the additional population that we have. That's just the bottom line. Um, it's actually under, there. this is off of that stat that I'm talking about, under the 52 year average for new home construction. And there's a pretty cool graph I found, it shows it's got a line drawn across and it's in mid 70s, mm -hmm. is right where we are today as far as new new home starts. Wow. So, home builders, there's, a, there's something for you. Now the challenge for home builders is with inflationary pressures, costs. Costs, costs, costs. I, yeah, they've gone up. They've gone up. I mean, we did, and during this whole time frame, remember, we with inflation, construction prices went up. Why? Because uh, the cost of raw materials went up, labor went up, everything went up, leading to inf affordability. Yeah. Add higher interest rates in there. It's tough. Yeah. Well, like you said, when you started in this business somewhat 17 years ago, yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, you have described the pricing on a a, uh, a house on a slab, yeah. three bedroom, yeah. you know, two bath house on a slab. It was a lot less of what they're a asking lot less for than now. We're at today. I mean, yeah. we're in the mid twos now, and we were in you know the 140s, 150s. Yeah. The average home price in Casasco County was 140, 150 thousand. Now we're well over the twos. Mm -hmm. It's definitely changed. So that interest rate. Is huge. What what does that mean to a home seller? Why aren't more people putting their homes on the market? And we've had this discussion as well. A lot of people. It's intuitive. If I'm in a four percent mortgage or a three and a half percent mortgage, mm -hmm. and I can't sell and get enough to pay cash for whatever I'm buying, yeah. Why would I trade that in? Mm -hmm. What well, notice I said why? Yeah. What's your why? Yeah. If you have to move, you're gonna move. If you move to a job change or whatever, there's still that happening. Mm -hmm. But as far as you making a conscious decision, I want to sell my house. It's financially, it doesn't make sense for you to go if you're trading even. Mm -hmm. If you're trading even, and the fact is you're actually trading down because you're paying a higher interest rate. Right, paying a higher interest rate, but you're going to get like say, get less, less square, for your money, yeah, less, less square, square footage, footage for yeah. your money. Yeah. So again, if you're why it doesn't align with that, you're not going to move. Right. And, and again, this isn't rocket science. It, it just look at people. How mm -hmm. do we act? Yeah. We're going to do what's best for us. What's best for me and my family is to stay put. 
if right. I can't improve my position by moving somewhere else. Well, because I talked to so many people, it's like, I know I could get double of what I paid for my house, you know, from like 20 years yeah. ago. Now the value of my house is worth double, but you're right. I mean, it's yeah. like, it comes down to where are they going to go? Where are you going to go? And what are they going to pay? Now, right. talking about your why, and I've, I've heard this you know, from you and from other people as well. Okay, hey, if, if you need to move, move. Correct. And don't worry about the interest rates right now because when they do come down, because they will eventually set at right. some point, we don't know what to, right. but you could always refi. Yes, you can. And there's a cost related to that. Mm -hmm. But, and I'm not saying, hey, go move so that you can plan to refi. Yeah, right, right. But right, there's right. always an option, right? I mean, it's something to consider yeah. if, you, if you choose to do that. If you have to move, move. Mm -hmm. If you have to, it's anything. You made the decision, you're taking a new job, you're, you had, how do you change that if you've got another, you know, child and you need an extra bedroom or you yeah. need more square footage? Or you, right. need, you want to be in a different school system, something like that. You got to move. You got to move. Mm -hmm. That's your why. But it, it definitely impacts that should go into and it is going into people's decision. They call it the mortgage rate lock effect. Mm -hmm. Almost 70 percent of the people are under a 5 percent mortgage right now. Yeah. So if you've got that. Why do you want to sell even to take advantage of, hey, I'm selling and, and I'm doubling my money, but now it's going to cost me double what I, you know, expected to pay. Right. It, it's kind of crazy. So, and, and the last thing, it, the NAR, National Association of Realtors has, has had out there for a long time, it's a longstanding uh, number, is that the average homeowner moves every seven years. Yeah. Yes. The average homeowner, every seven years. Right. And I've, I've spouted that forever. But in research for this, I found an article that talks about it. It's from NAR. It says the average from 85 to 2009 was 6.1 years people were staying in. Okay. Okay. 2010 to 2022, it's now 9.3 years. Think about what's happened over that time period. Yes, we had the crazy crush during COVID. Right. But a lot of people didn't move for whatever reason. They're all working from home. They just stayed home. They mm -hmm. didn't choose to move. So I have a feeling that NARA is going to revise that because they're doing longer term, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's great we can spout that stat. Hey, it's seven years. People move every seven years. But recent history says it's now nine years. Mm -hmm. It's not seven anymore. Wow. That's significant. That is. That's significant. But again, depends on what statistics you're looking at right. in the time frame you're looking at. I'm not saying be you know short-sighted, but overall... People are staying in their homes longer, and it's for all the things we just talked about. That yeah. mortgage rates, you know, and affordability. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. All leading to less inventory for yeah. potential buyers that are going out there. So yeah. potential sellers, there's still lots of demand, not a lot of competition in that. Lots of uh, a very interesting conversation today. Lots of new facts that you brought to the table. If you would like to continue this conversation with Mark, make sure you reach out to him. Mark, your contact information? Sure. Phone number is 574-527-0660. Website, skabowskiteam.com. You can always email me, mark at skabowskiteam.com. All right. Very good. You've been listening to Real Estate in Real Time. Have yourself a wonderful weekend.